In this tutorial, we will learn how to create beautiful game environments in a silhouette style, akin to games such as Limbo or Feist. What makes this style incredible is not only how atmospheric, haunting, and mysterious it looks, but also how quick and easy it can be to put together. You don't need to be an artist, you don't even need a drawing tablet. We're the Blackthorn Brothers, and this is four steps to make beautiful game environments. Step one, drawing environment pieces. I'm going to be using Photoshop, but everything shown here can be done using a free alternative such as Krita or Gimp. So to begin, create a brand new empty canvas. What we need are simple environment pieces such as hills and trees, which we will then assemble in Unity. I'll change my background to blank and then paint in a large blob-like shape for my hill in white. The reason I'm painting this in white is so that I can then easily change the color inside of the sprite render component in Unity. Environment pieces close to the camera will be blank, and the further we recede into the background, the lighter the trees and hills will become. You'll see that I'm also painting in some small tufts of grass using a basic soft round brush. Then I'll duplicate this hill, move it down a little, and apply a Gaussian blur filter to it. Giving environment pieces that are in the background or foreground a slight blur really gives your world an extra layer of depth. It's a super easy trick, and as you can see in every scene in Limbo, they use this technique a lot. I'll hide the background layer, then export this file as a PNG inside of my Unity project. For the trees, I'm simply making rectangles with perhaps a little bump or branch sticking out. Then I'll duplicate my trees and blur them, and maybe do that one last time and blur those even more, so we can use these for trees that are even further in the background. I'd even blur a tiny bit the first trees, because a very crisp outline can make the silhouette sprites look a little flat, whereas a tiny bit of blur gives it some volume. Again, no need to make ultra-complex tree shapes, stay simple, you just need to make a rectangle with some bumps. Finally, if you're feeling extra spicy, you can create gnarly branches like this, and you can use reference images for inspiration and apply a blur filter. Step two, assembling our scene in Unity. Now that we have our environment pieces, we can make sure they're nicely split up inside the sprite editor, which is found in the import settings. Now let's make our main layer. This is basically where the action will take place. I'll drag and drop a few hills, change the color to black inside of the sprite render component. As you can see, I'm flipping the direction, changing the scale and rotation to reuse this one sprite without it seeming too repetitive. Before continuing, I recommend you keep your hierarchy nice and organized, renaming objects and perhaps even grouping them under an empty game object called main layer. Now I'll create a new empty game object called background layer and I'll drag and drop my blurred hill under that. I'll start by changing the order in layer, setting it to a background layer which should render behind the default layer. Then I'll change the color, making it a darkish gray. Lastly, I'll switch my scene mode from 2D to 3D. I'll also make sure my camera is set to perspective mode, if not the parallax effect will not work. Now I can move my background hill along the z-axis so it's further away from the camera. The further it is, the less it will appear to move when the camera moves, giving the world that feeling of depth. This is parallax. And I'll even make another layer of hills that are even further back. Of course, remember to lower their order in layer so they render behind everything else. The more layers you create, each with varying z-axis values, the more depth your 2D world will have. As you can see, we can test how the parallax effect will look simply by moving the camera left and right and noticing how the hills move in response. Now I can add trees. I'll start with some foreground trees, making a new empty game object in the hierarchy called foreground layer and adding a blurry tree to it. I'll also make a new foreground sorting layer and apply that to my foreground environment pieces so they render in front of everything. So here's a quick time lapse of me adding my simple tree to the foreground and backgrounds, taking the time to test how it all looks by moving the camera left and right. You can then add the gnarly tree branches for extra detail. For even more depth and immersion, I recommend slightly shifting the Z value for every foreground and background element, so that almost no two sprites have the exact same Z value. This can be as small as 0.5 difference, but adds that extra little touch. It no longer feels like layers of sprites, but an actual world. Now guys, if you're enjoying this tutorial, consider joining the Game Dev Brotherhood. This is our VIP community of the most passionate game creators, and it's where we go even more in depth on the art and craft of game creation with 
courses on how to make full-on games, live Q&As, and intense monthly game jams. In short, it's where you learn the craft, meet people who share your passion, and take massive action by being held accountable and surrounded by other developers. The link to the Game Dev Brotherhood is in the description, and cherry on the cake, there's a 7-day free trial, which you can start right now, link in the description. Step 3, particles and post-processing. We can add some simple particles, for example, black bubbles that fade in and out, giving our woods an extra magic touch. I also recommend some smoky particles, just to give a bit of movement. Let us know if you want a more in-depth tutorial on Unity's particle system. Now, these moving particles add subtle movement and life to our world, as you can see, with very little effort. Of course, adding slightly swaying tree branches, flowers or flying bats and birds can take everything a step further if you have the time and resources. Finally, I'll add some post-processing, selecting my camera, enabling the post-processing box up here, then adding a volume component. I'll now add the vignette effect, which gives my scene that atmospheric black contour, and I'll also add some grain, which adds some great texture and that slightly retro vibe to the scene. Now you can add a little player character, and you've made a mysterious world he can explore. The main takeaways from this tutorial are, number one, stay simple. You don't need to have insane drawing or modeling skills to create interesting looking worlds. We basically used blurry rectangles and a few branches to make an atmospheric forest. Number two, when creating a side-scrolling game, use layers and layers of parallax to add a ton of depth to your world. Okay, we really hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. This was the Blankton Brothers, over and out.